In this lecture, we're gonna be adding in our hidden area to our tile map. So we haven't even gone over this level yet, so I thought now would probably be a good time to do so. So you already know that we have our overlay, player, zones, and door, and you've actually already kind of seen the collisions beforehand, but now is the time to go over what is actually going on. So we have this collision layer here that actually has four squares to it. And the reason why I put them as squares was just to differentiate what was doing what. So, and really what that really means is the collision polygon, as you can see when I put my mouse over it, you can actually see the collision polygon for the yellow square, you can see it for the blue square, and for the purple square and red square. So red is a full rectangular collision poly, and then when you go over here you have half, or a little bit less than half, then you have a diagonal, and then you have this broken diagonal that all work into each other. If I drop this down and turn on the collision polys, you can actually see, let me grab the mouse here, you can actually see the diagonal lines. So even though, uh, let me actually put this out here, even though this is a complete and total square image, it's not actually colliding until you actually get to that diagonal line. Same thing up here, you have that little break where it's like half a diagonal to get to the half platform and then you go up. And I thought that this was just something interesting to add into our game so you could really see how this works. Now this is actually a, uh, it's a duplicate of this map. So we have two collision maps working here. We have this which has a solid behavior and then we have this which has a jump through behavior. And if you haven't already noticed, you probably have uh, that way we can jump through this and drop down. Now I didn't actually set up the drop down controls uh, for gamepad or anything else, but if you go into our level one event, or actually it's in our game manager, if you go into our game manager and into our player, you'll find our jump through right there, our keyboard, if our down arrow is being held down, and our player mask is on the floor, then tell our player mask to fall down through the jump through. So really, we just have this broken down into two just to really differentiate the jump through and the collision map, and you can do that throughout the entire level if you really want to. You can get more creative with this. It's up to you, but this is how I did it. And to set the actual collisions, all I did was double click here, and then I uh, moved the collision polygons to where I needed them to be. So that's a diagonal one, and then this one is our broken one, just like that. And that works for our map. You can deconstruct this however you like. Let's take a look at our actual tile map, and then we'll get into our hidden map. So now this is going to get a little bit crazy here, and rightly so. Let me turn off our collision poly so we can see. Uh, there are a lot of tile maps added here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a lot is the verdict. And you kind of have to get used to making a game like this. Now there's actually something interesting that I'd like to do here, and that's I'd like to take the grass tile map and I'd like to put that on top of our player here. So anything that goes up here, let's call this our, we're just gonna call this the grass tile map. Uh, anything that goes on top that really has nothing of value other than to hide other objects behind it, like the door, uh, we should probably always put that on top. But you can drop down the tile map level one layout and you can see all the tile maps that I use. So we have our jump through tile map and then we have our level one tile map. And let me make sure that I put our jump through back. I thought I did that. I guess I moved it. Let me put that back lock that up, and now you can just see that we have our grass tile map there. So we have a lot of these tile maps. We have 10 tile maps, not including our hidden map, uh, just to make this level look nice. Now I've included in our assets folder that you downloaded a few lectures back the tile map file using the free program tile that I used to make this. It's pretty simple and I recommend doing it this way because otherwise how else are you gonna make a level like this? The one thing that I will note here is the ones that have the underscore P are the ones that I would be parallaxing if this wasn't a lecture. So what I would do is I would take out all of these tile maps and put them on separate layers. Uh, and then I would just set the parallax rate to something slow and that way we can actually have just a little bit of background parallax in there. But because I'm not sure if you're using the free version or the professional version, what uh, you're doing, that's just a note that you can have. I've done tutorials on it before, it's not something new. Uh, so that's just another option that I've tried to organize for you. But that's how it's set up. They're all just layered one after another. And then really the important bits are our collision maps because that's where we're interacting. And also our grass tile map, which I'm excited to see how that works out. 
So now let's take a look at our hidden tile map. Maybe you already looked at this, maybe you had no idea this was here, but one of the things in puzzle platformers that I love is when you actually overlap something that you didn't mean to overlap, and then it actually opens up into another area. And we're gonna incorporate that into our puzzle. So right here we have the hidden tile map layer, and if I uncheck this, you can see that this little area has now completely opened. You can see our nice background effect there, plus this is all gone. So we're gonna be using that to our advantage, and what we're gonna do right now is actually show that to the player once we overlap the hidden tile map. So the hidden tile map is also 1920 by 1200, but it's called Object Tile Map Tiles Hidden, and what we're gonna do in our game manager, or could we do this in our level one event? Let's think. Since this is specific to our level one event, let's actually do it in our level one event sheet. Now, if we put it in our game manager and other uh, levels actually use the hidden tile map, then it would work just fine. But since this is very specific to this hidden tile map, uh, we're gonna put it on our level one event. So here's the logic that we need to do. Actually, the first thing we need to do is we need to grab our level one uh, or tile map hidden, there we go, uh, and add an instance variable to it. We're gonna call this inst underscore state. So we're actually gonna make a state engine for our tile map. State engines are something that we've pretty much been doing this entire time, you just haven't really called it a state engine. There's not really uh, a difference to actually using a state engine and calling it a state engine, but it is a great thing to do. If you ever have an issue, odds are you just throw in a state engine and it's going to work. And really what that means is we are now giving this instance of our object different states to function in. So here's what we're going to do. If our player mask is overlapping our hidden tile maps, let's go into tile maps, level one layout, and let's grab our hidden tile map. If we're overlapping our hidden tile map, then we are going to set that hidden tile map state to one. And what that's going to do is trigger its opacity. So if our state is now one, actually if we are not overlapping this, let's set that up first. I'm gonna select this entire event and hit X on the keyboard. So if we are no longer overlapping, we are going to set the state to zero. Now this is a very basic example, but this is really a great way to program and I highly recommend always using state engines. So now what happens if our tile map state equals one? Let's go tile map, level one, hidden tile map, let's compare. Let's find out what we want it to do if it equals one. If it equals one, then let's set the tile map opacity just like we've done before with a lerp. Let's set the opacity to lerp between itself, so what it's currently at, which should be 100, so you can't even see what's underneath. And then we want it to go all the way down to 10, and we want this to happen relatively quickly, so let's say three times delta time. So again, our current position, which is 100, to our target position, which is 10, so now we'll actually be fading out to the speed in which we want to go from our current position to our target position, and hit OK. Now let's actually do this again. Let's select this and hit X, which is the same as saying if it doesn't equal zero. So this is literally the same as saying if it's not equal to, uh, not equal to one, then let's put it back to 100. So if it is not, if we are not overlapping the tile map, then we are not equal to one, we're equal to zero, and now we can actually set our opacity back to 100. The best way for what we just did to make sense is to test out our layout. So let's hit play on our level one layout here. And okay, so we're spawning where, wherever our um, global layer decided to drop us off, which is fine because I only hit play from the level one layout. Uh, right off the bat, I love the fact that we are now behind this grass tile. So if you can push out that grass tile to be above the player, highly recommend that. But here's what um, we're gonna do. So we actually have that zoom object where it's actually zooming us all the way in and then we're zooming out a little bit, which is cool. We have our zoom out over here. That's also really nice. Uh, and right here is our hidden object. So all of this wall right here, when we overlap that, that's when we're gonna set our state to one and it's gonna actually lerp the opacity from 100 to 10. So let's see this work. There we go, we just walk over and it actually opened up this hidden room and how cool is that effect?
So there are a few things that we might want to do for this effect in addition to it. We could actually change the look height of our camera to actually be a little higher. So you, maybe you want to see the top of the wall. That's something we can throw in there. We can also maybe uh, zoom out as well. We can put a zoom out object as well. I don't know. The ideas are pretty much limitless once you have these cool hidden areas working. And our hidden map, see now that we're not overlapping it, it goes back. Uh, maybe that doesn't go back fast enough. Maybe that takes too much time so we can mess around with what we're multiplying by delta time. But really all we're doing is making this little tile map have an alpha of 10 or an opacity of 10, and there we go. So that's how we can make a hidden area. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one.